Well, we've looked at the Fusion F1 table saw, the F2, and now it's time to take a deep dive look at the Fusion F3 table saw redesigned by Laguna. Hey everyone, it's Paul Mayer here with Toolmetrics, and this time I get to take a look at the new redesigned Fusion F3 table saw from Laguna. And what sets this one apart in the product line is really a couple things, uh, heft and power. So this one has a lot more cast iron, it's industrial strength, and is really designed for a rigorous production environment, whether it's a cabinet shop or furniture shop. Uh, the other is power. So this one comes with a three horsepower motor, requires 220 volt service, uh, and really has the power to deal with very thick hardwoods uh, that you can feed through it at a steady pace all day long. Um, a couple noteworthy things before I dive in uh, deep uh, is just one thing that struck me in setting this saw up is the things that come standard with this saw. Now a lot of times when you get a new table saw you start thinking about the upgrades uh, and the add-ons that you might bring into play. Uh, this brings a, a lot of things right out of the box. Uh, first, the, the outfeed support, uh, both on the side and the rear. You've got a high quality laminate, smooth, solid surface, uh, and nice support for your work pieces on side and out the rear. Uh, also, uh, above the table dust collection. I've not seen this standard on cabinet saws uh, in the industry. It's usually an add-on, a fairly expensive one. So right out of the box, you get an above the table dust collection system. Uh, and the other nice uh, thing that's included in this saw is a wheel system tucked under the cabinet. It's available to allow you to easily move the cabinet around the shop uh, when you want to reposition it. So lots of neat stuff. I'm going to take a deep dive look as I normally do. As I go through, please feel free to ask any questions you want down below. I'll do my very best to answer whatever I can. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive in deep. I measure the thickness of the cabinet body itself at about 85 one thousandths of an inch, so just under 3 32nd. That's a very thick, rigid cabinet body. I'd be surprised if there were a lot of saws in the market that had a thicker cabinet body than that. All right, I've got the cast iron table removed, and I want to just take a look at a few things uh, in the anatomy or the architecture of the saw itself. So first thing that I look at is the trunnion assembly. That's everything that's in place to support the motor uh, as it raises and lowers and tilts. And so on a true cabinet saw, what I want to see is a lot of cast iron, and the cast iron does a couple things for us. One is it's, it's very rigid and can support that heavy motor. Uh, and it is also vibration dampening. So as the motor's running and digging into a heavy cut, it's gonna keep that vibration from transferring throughout the saw, uh, and it's just gonna dampen it right there. And so we find that in this saw, a lot of beefy cast iron, good rigid construction. Now, all three of the components, the assembly where it connects to the, to the cabinet itself, uh, the upper trunnion and the lower are all thick, heavy duty, good quality cast iron construction. Now, a couple other key areas that I'd look for. First, in the raising and lowering of the blade, I wanna see a couple things. And this has this very nice, high quality threaded steel rod, and that's gonna be, you can consider that the drive mechanism. Now, to keep that, um, that assembly rigid and in a straight vertical alignment as it raises and lowers, which is really important for cut accuracy. Uh, we've got these polished steel rods on the front and rear of the saw and those hold everything in very steady alignment. There is no slop in that mechanism at all as I raise and lower the blade. All right, while we have the top off the table saw, we can also get a look at this unique drive gear, which is responsible for tilting the mechanism uh, up uh, to left and right. Now, what's unique about it is it's fast action. So I can completely tilt the blade from zero to 45 in seven and a half turns. That's just like on the F2. All right, while we're here, we can get a good look at the dust collection shroud below the blade. This is the, absolutely the right way to collect dust on a, on a table saw. So rather than collecting from the entire body of the saw, we're concentrating the airflow to a very small area right around the blade, giving you the maximum draw based on the dust collector that you have in place. 
Uh, that complemented with the above uh, table collection gives you a great capture above and below the table. From here we can also see the dust collection hose which runs through the body of the saw connecting to the shroud and running down to the side of the saw where it hooks up to your dust collector on the outside of the cabinet. We can also get a good look at the riving knife which is a true riving knife that raises, lowers and tilts with the blade and with a single flip lever mechanism I can flip that and remove the riving knife and pop it in just as quickly. From here we can also get a look at this clever arbor locking mechanism. So and by pressing that in place it locks the arbor and now I can unlock the arbor nut using a single tool rather than having to put two wrenches in place. It's also worth noting that the cabinet bottom is sealed really well to the cabinet body itself. That's important from a dust collection efficiency because you want all that airflow maximized at the blade and not pulling from gaps in the cabinet. The saw has a massive cast iron work surface at 27 by 44 inches wide. I weighed it at 110 pounds just for the cast iron top alone. I measured it uh, and it was, there was about 1.5 one thousandths of an inch run out, uh, making it a very nice high quality cast iron work surface. Off to the side you have an additional 32 inches extension with a laminate top uh, and to the rear you've got an additional 21 inches of support for ripping which is a very nice feature. I really consider outfeed support to be one of the most important and underrated safety features that you can have on a table saw so kudos that it's included standard on this saw. A lot of thought went into the design of the blade guard on the F3. First thing that really caught my attention, of course, is the integrated dust collection with a dust port uh, extending directly off of the blade guard itself. Uh, that captures a lot of the dust that comes off the top of the saw, uh, which is a good uh, companion to the below guard collection that I talked about earlier. I like the independent side panels. That really comes into play when we're th ripping thin strips, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And I also like the fact that it's so easy to remove and return to the saw. The F3 comes with a high quality zero clearance insert with a locking mechanism that allows you to easily remove the plate, drop it back into place and lock it securely. The Arbor can accommodate a full 3 quarter inch dado stack and there's an optional dado throat plate available as well. The miter gauge has a cushy hand grip that locks down solidly, a nice easy to read accurate gauge and it has three features that I think are more consistent with a high quality aftermarket uh, miter gauge. First the miter bar has two adjustments on it that can be used to adjust the fit between the bar and the miter slot on the table giving you a perfect fit and eliminating any slop. The second is this adjustable extension to the miter gauge which allows you to uh, have more support for your workpiece, adjusting it toward the blade as needed and it also has these T-slots in it so that you can use it with jigs. And the third is this rack and pinion adjustment design which allows you to rotate the miter gauge around, select the exact degree increment and lock it down in place. The smooth rack and pinion design really increases the accuracy and makes it easy to adjust and get it dialed into where you want it. Alright, let's take a look at the fence and rail system which is one of my favorite aspects of this saw. So first starting with the rails, you've got front and rear heavy, heavy steel rails uh, extending out in my case 52 inches, there's also a 36 inch version of, available. A nice clear indicator on the fence itself so you can see exactly where you're at, drop it down and lock into place and you know when you lock in on that measurement that is exactly the measurement between the fence and the blade. The lever mechanism also releases easily and has these magnets that lock it into place up above so that when you slide and adjust the fence it moves effortlessly with no interference from the cam locking lever. The frame of the fence itself is three inches wide, very, very rigid, heavy duty steel. Uh, the side fence is a, an extrusion of aluminum uh, and that has adjustability. Now that gets into what really sets this fence apart from any stock fence on a cabinet saw in the US market and that's this European style fence. Now I really went into this on the F2 uh, video, I'm going to just talk about it in kind of a summary fashion on the F3 video. The European style fence has a couple of neat scenarios that it really helps out with. The first
first is uh, it gives you the ability to extend the fence forward if you want a little bit more runway to support your workpiece. So if you're dealing with a sheet of plywood and you want more runway, you, you can to steady the workpiece before it gets to the blade, you can do that easily. It also gives you the ability to extend the fence out in front of the blade and now you can use the fence in conjunction with the miter gauge. That allows you to make safe crosscuts using the fence that's dialed into a specific length, no need to make adjustments to that, giving you a safe area behind the fence for the workpiece to drop in and not worry about pinching and kickback between the blade and the fence, so a nice safety feature. The other thing that it allows you to do is release the fence, flip it over, and run it in horizontal mode. Now, there are scenarios where you can run laminate over the top of that edge. I showed that on the F2 video. What I think is gonna be the most common use of this is if you're ripping thin sheets, or thin rips for, say, a cutting board or wherever you need a thin rip. This allows you to slide the fence very close to the blade uh, and make your thin rips without having to use an auxiliary jig uh, or other uh, devices. This is a very safe, a clever way to rip thin strips safely and leave the blade guard in place. Okay, let's try the dime test. If I can get a dime to stand on edge during the power up and spin down of a table saw, I consider that to be a pretty smooth running saw. The saw generates about 78 decibels of sound output, which is not bad for such a powerful machine. I found the F3 to have plenty of power to rip through 8 quarter white oak and red oak without bogging down at all. The big 3 horsepower mode was drawn about 8 amps when it was idling and maxed out at about 13 amps during a heavy rip. The switch is a magnetic style commercial grade switch attached to the rail and it's got this convenient large format stop button that you could actually access with your knee in a situation where you might need that. The hand wheels on the front and side are large format cast iron chromed wheels with a handle that actually can pop in and get out of the way if you want it to. Over here we get a look at the other hand wheel which is for tilting the blade at the accelerated pace. We have tool storage for a wrench, splitter, uh, as well as the miter gauge. We also get a look at the 4 inch dust port that you connect your dust collector to. In the rear of the saw we've got hooks to store the fence when it's not in use. All right, that about wraps up my look at the Laguna Fusion F3 table saw. I like the power, precision, and I like all the features that are kind of built into the base package. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have questions down below. Meanwhile, I hope you subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel and come back for more woodworking, wood turning, DIY, and tool related videos. Thanks for watching.